My dog apparently is at the park. No one told the dog to go to the park, but he's apparently at the park. How do you know that he's at the park? I got a text message from someone saying, hi, I have your dog, I'm at the park. And I said, oh, that's when I said, oh, shit. and I walked out because I had to go tell my wife, go get the dog from the park. She goes, how is the dog at the park? She went downstairs, our front door is wide open. That'll do it. Yeah. I thought it. I, I thought maybe you were fancy and had a GPS collar on it. I, I, you know what's funny is I have an Apple AirTag on his collar and it has done me nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe my dog will show up, maybe not. Who knows? But who cares? Because we're recording the... What's up, everybody? Welcome to the All Things MSP Podcast. I am your host, Justin Escar. With me always is my good friend, OG host, Mr. Eric Anthony, founder of the All Things MSP Facebook group. Eric, how are you today? I'm doing amazing today because I don't have a lost dog. But... Besides that, and uh, if you want to see what that's all about, check the uh, outtakes at the end of this podcast. Uh, how are you today, Justin? I'm good, except I have a lost dog. So I'm so glad Apple gives us technology to find things. It didn't tell me that my dog ran out my front door and went three houses down to the park. But again, stay till the end. If, if, if for no other reason to hear me complain about why my dog ran away. Uh, but he'll be home soon. He'll be fine. Speaking of dogs, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, what's up? I have, I have the, I have a good friend of mine who I'll, I'll say, I'll when I every time I see him I say, yo, dog. I don't, I don't know where I'm going with this. It's been a day. Um, <laughs> you're trying to segue. That, that's all right, man. Trying to segue. It's not working. Let me try it again. Sorry. <laughs> I've never, I've never screwed up like this. Also, this is probably all staying in the, in the cut. Uh, my dog is fine. He's back. He ran to the park by himself, wanted to get some sunshine. Uh, my Apple AirTag did me nothing. So thanks, Apple. Uh, speaking of Apple, I have a good friend of mine, an Apple consultant based in Atlanta, Georgia. My good friend, Lucas from Fuji. What's up, Lucas? Hey, man. Um, I'm just happy to be here. I love learning from other MSPs and just getting some stories from the trenches. Just diving right into it, aren't you, my friend? <laughs> yeah. Lucas, before we start, uh, why don't you tell the listeners who may not know who you are, give us like a two, three line. Who are you? What do you do? And uh, what'd you have for breakfast today? Mm. Today, I had Chick-fil-A, <laughs> which <laughs> I'm from Atlanta. So that is perfectly on brand. Um, I, it was this dad, kid uh, event that goes on once a month at my, my daughter's school and they serve Chick-fil-A. So nice. that's what I have. Um, so for a very brief backstory, uh, Fuji's now been around for 15 years and we started, I say we I had a co-founder at the time. Um, he left after two years because he learned running a small business wasn't his cup of tea. And that was a very, like big learning moment for me too. I was like 24 at the time, whenever he left. Um, but anyway, started doing break fix work in 2008. I had just come from an Apple store where I was doing training and thought that, you know, making around a hundred bucks an hour would be super easy work. And I could just fix Wi-Fi networks, you know, maybe like how a lot of us started. Um, back then Apple still made servers and, mail servers and i was just you know super excited to jump into uh, anything that would really pay <laughs> pay my bills and to fa you know fast forward now um we are a team of eight we are in uh four states and you know can do a lot of work of our work remotely and we are about 90 percent of our revenue being um msp type of work so it didn't happen overnight. It was a gradual progression, but we're by focusing and kind of like what we wanted to be good at, we, you know, we're able to progress that MSP or the, the recurring revenue percentage over the years. Um, we started saying no to deployments at K through 12 schools to saying no to the big, you know, enterprise type projects and just focused on the MSP work. Um, so yeah, that's, a little bit about Fuji. That's awesome, man. And uh, you and I have been friends for quite some time. You actually did a presentation at 
my conference, Ace's conference, back our second year. If you remember, we were in Austin. You did a whole thing on uh, on how to do video because you have a you have a face for video. I have a I have a face for radio. It's a very different <laughs> lifestyle between you, that, that, that the two of us live. Um, and so I've uh, and just to put it out there right at the beginning. I've I've always uh, enjoyed our friendship and our talks, and I'm happy to have you here today. Uh, but Eric knows what we're talking about, so I'm just going to give him the mic. <laughs> oh, great. Thanks, I gave man. you all the words. Come on. I heard it. I'm um, so frazzled by and, this dog situation. <laughs> and by the way, I'm the one with neither the face nor the voice for a podcast or a video or whatever. <laughs> anyway. Hey, you're doing the podcast. I'm not. So you got something. <laughs> I just like MSPs. I, it's it's what I do. But yeah, we thought it would be interesting today because all three of us have either are an MSP or have been one at some point. And we thought it would be really interesting and educational for the group to talk about uh, the things that we probably shouldn't have done and what we did to fix that. So who wants to go first? I mean, we can get the jokes out of the way. I shouldn't have started an MSP. <laughs> Moving beyond that, because that's not why the listeners are here. Uh, well, well, let's let Lucas go first. Lucas, I mean, unless you want one of us. You, uh, you and I have been in business the same amount of time, so it's not like I'm more seasoned than you are or anything like that. Um, though it yeah. does sound like the Chick-fil-A is more seasoned than both of us. Um, you know, <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, like, I think well, what's funny about uh, when we were talking about, you know, these these stories that, that we've all got the idea came up of that we're just all guessing anyway and i know one of your recent episodes you had like paul green on which that was a phenomenal episode if you guys haven't listened to it on marketing uh for msps and now of course he's he's got quite a, a tight operation where he's really helping organizations with their marketing and that's why we need people like paul green but the rest of us, and I don't know, I can't speak for you guys, it, we're all just kind of guessing what yeah. what will work, whether that's policies, right, like HR stuff, um, whether that's technical, you know, apps that we're going to start using or, uh, or clients to take on or not or how to bill and whatnot. So uh, that is just kind of a fun question, like wh what – did you try that once you did it, you realized, oh, this actually wasn't that big of a deal or it was actually way better. Why didn't I do this, you know, before? Yeah. Um, and one th that uh, I, from early on that kind of ended up stinging us. So this isn't a great <laughs> example of like, hey, just try. But I'll start with the failure first. And that is uh, unlimited vacation time. I was inspired by all these Silicon Valley, like, you know, <laughs> benefits packages, like back when that was the cool thing to do was no, Hey, no vacation policy, take it whenever you want. And what I learned is that it works for most of the people on your team, you know, that, yeah. And we didn't really have problems with it. Everyone ended up taking, you know, around three weeks of time when I kind of did the average over several years, but where it bit us is there was a, a customer, uh, an employee with a medical issue, and we had no idea how to handle it. And that employee ended up being remote for a while, then completely off the grid for uh, six months. And well, we're a small team; we care for each other. We know that you know they're supporting their families and whatnot. So we we did everything we could to still. Uh, take care of that employee and we did and they they came back um and it was great working relationship but it looking back i don't it, it put the company in a very difficult position put the rest of the employees in a very difficult position put our our cash flow you know kind of in a bind because they weren't able to work so uh it was like a reminder that well, hey, we we did change that policy. Hopefully, someone listening, <laughs> if you do have an unlimited <laughs> vacation policy, you can uh, you know think about that and maybe set some limits around what that looks like. Um, but that was an example of you know trying and failing, but it wasn't the end of the world. 
I think the uh, I think we as small businesses all try to model after the bigger businesses and say like, oh, if they can do it, we can do it too. But like the one thing we forget about is there's a reason why they're a big business, right? If we try <laughs> to model the unlimited vacation policy off of Google, if someone takes six months off, Google has now hired four people to replace them. Meanwhile, we cannot do that, right? And so there's a lot, I mean, we do the, the unlimited vacation policy also, but now I'm thinking like in our handbook, we should put like a double asterisk with like, within reason or whatever it is. Um, but there's a lot of those, there's a lot of those little things that, and, and you said something that was really important to me, which is you said you care about your employees and their families. And, and right. that's really important as a small business. But part of me also wants to just say like, as owners, I'm perfectly knowing that I'm going to start controversy here. Should we care? Like, because the, the <laughs> fact is like, no, hear me out, hear me out, right? I, of course I care about my employees, right? One of our employees had an issue with a pet. I was worried about it. I was checking in, making sure everything's okay, whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. I let them take a day off. They needed time, fine. Like, but at the same time, if I wasn't nice about it, that person still would have taken that day off and may or may not have come back to work and I could have hired somebody new. Like, is the only reason we're being nice to people is because the talent pool is not that strong right now? Like, or or are we just more afraid that they're going to go on glass door and be like, Justin's an a-hole. Like, I know where I stand in life. I don't need someone to, like, put it publicly, whatever. But, like, what, I think part of the question is why, right? And and I'm don't get me wrong. I'm doing this on purpose, right? Like, I'm not trying to – don't not care about people. I'm, I'm talking <laughs> this on purpose. Like, and this goes through the entire system, right? It's not just – unlimited vacation policy it's for it's for everything right think about all the benefits we have one of our friends uh a uh, gentleman named chris holmes from rooted consulting for example he has a really he has something that i've never heard anyone do he talked about this at aces last year he actually buys every employee a new pair of sneakers like every six months like because wow. his team walks they walk around a lot where they are a big metro area and he understands the need for good footwear like and we're not even talking we're not talking he's not buying like air force ones right like we're talking about like white on white new balance like the kind that your dad wears so nice. but like but why like the question is why and so uh is that um are we making a mistake by i know we're going on a tangent but we've talked about this in another episode our podcast is not linear we're just a bunch of tangents we're the multiverse of podcasts um, are we making a mistake by caring for our employees? And I want you to say no. <laughs> <laughs> Is this where I talk? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's open for them. Or, or, okay. Or was that a, a rhetorical question? No, no, I think you're right. And I, I came obviously with the policies like that. You can see, I came from like, um, well, I guess the wind, the lens I'm always looking through is what kind of company would I want to work at, yeah. right? And I think yeah. we are all kind of um, conscientious of that. It's like we want to make a policy that we feel is ethical and, and whatnot. And, uh, you know, there is a point, though, where you, you can end up damaging the organization. You know, the organization is not you as the founder or a leader um, or an engineer, an, an employee. It, the organization is its own entity and it it needs to have um boundaries i guess and so without get this turning into like a therapy episode <laughs> um you know we have to have boundaries you guys were even talking about that on a recent episode of uh having boundaries like finding the right clients you know and knowing what kind of clients like setting boundaries uh in in your msa with with your clients and I think we have to do the same thing for our policies too. Like, yes, we care for them. We, uh, whenever issues come up, cause life does happen, but also what's going to protect, you know, the, the organization as the unit, which, you know, what's also helped me is getting other people, this is another tangent, but getting other people on uh, a leadership team, like forming uh, an actual leadership team instead of, just like seniority or, oh, that's the senior guy that knows networking and AD and the most advanced identity management and stuff. Um, 
but creating a leadership team where these are not decided in the echo chamber of our own minds. Um, so that, that has kind of helped. Do you guys have leadership, uh, any kind of, um, yeah, anyone helping make decisions on policies like that? Uh, I mean, Eric's the leader. I, I, when it comes to policies about the podcast, I just fall, I'm just a soldier. I'm just the, <laughs> um, but at Virtua, uh, yeah. So a lot of it does come from, from me and we have our directors and, uh, our two directors and our president and myself have a meeting and we kind of go over that kind of stuff and we're slowly getting into those, those conversations around policies. Right. Um, especially because part of, I mean, for us, it's a little different because we just acquired a company last year. We're still working on merging and getting all the the policies for both companies to be on the same page and like how things are going to work. And that's 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 a, a very difficult uh, and a very different kind of conversation than than doing that. But like yeah. bring back to policies and what we're talking about in the original, like I mentioned this to my team the other day. If I was we don't have a PSA, right? We don't we don't use a PSA. We use Zendesk. We use FreshBooks. We use uh click up we're broken up all over these things and i said to my team the other day i said if we were starting the company today we would start with a psa right because i know especially on the apple side a lot of apple consultants don't use a psa they weren't really built they don't they're not really built for mac people they don't integrate well with mac stuff but they're slowly getting better um and so that's one of the things where we're now actively looking for something literally had a phone call with with a potential one today um and we're, because we want to fix, it's not a mistake, right? But it's one of those things where like, and I think this is what the bigger problem is with the entire conversation is. I cannot go back in time to tell myself to do different things because those things didn't exist. Right. right? right. In 2008, in 2008, PSA wasn't, um, Eric's going to check me on this one because he was, he, he, cause, cause PC, no, because PC, uh, MSPs are different. I definitely in the in the Apple side, P PSA was not a term that was used at all. Correct. I learned that term, I think, at like a, a general MSP conference in yeah. Atlanta. Now, see, it wasn't with the Apple peers. On the Windows side, it was there. Like I right. started because a lot of people know my story. I had a break fix company, and then I started my MSP in two thousand seven. I knew in 2007 when I started that MSP that I needed two things. I needed a PSA and I needed an RMM. And so right. in the Windows world of things, in the PC world of things, those existed. Um, but back then, Mac and Windows were even more separated than they still are today. It's a lot closer today because we've realized that, uh, you know, my... The expression that I always use is you go into a boardroom of any business, right? And look and see what computers are on the desks. They're Macs. Even if the rest of the organization uses PCs, the decision makers, I think, I don't think I'm stretching it here to say at least eight, if not nine times out of 10 are using Macs. And so it's always been critical to me that you include both. Uh, but back then, it wasn't the same as it is today. I think it's interesting that this podcast has turned from don't do what we did to HR policies and leadership. Uh, now, I think it's <laughs> relevant. I think it's very relevant, though, because I think one of those things that we've kind of sussed out here is that this is a major concern for most MSPs. Uh, most of us start and for a very long time run it ourselves out of our own head to use, you know, kind of your words, Lucas. Uh, you know, policies are tough. HR is tough. Um, but one of the ways that we can get through, and we were talking about this a little bit before the show, about how it's really important to how do I want to put this to kind of test things faster. And so one of the ways to test things faster to get to the right solution is to float it to other people, right? Yeah. yeah. Is, is share that with a leadership team, with a team of peers that you network with, 
with a mentor or coach, if you have one, uh, it's really important to have that leadership team, whatever it looks like, uh, whether it's employees, whether it's peers, whatever. And can, can I share something that kind of unlocked that for me? And it was like this misconception, yeah, that that prevented me from sharing too much is that I didn't want to bother my team. It was like, I, hey, I'm the one who signed up to run the company and you're here as an engineer of you know this certain specialty. Listen, you've got tickets on your <laughs> and projects on, on your plate. I, I want to be the the employer and kind of like just solve all these problems for you. But so that was my, my mental um, block, I guess. And it wasn't until I I kind of was was brainstorming with a, a client of, of ours who's actually a COO and, and he he's used this model called EOS to, to run his organization. And he pointed it out right there. He's like, you don't have any leaders helping you make decisions. Yeah. I'm like, well, I don't want to bug them, you know, like, and I, I can't pay them director or VP, whatever title, you know, I can't pay them for that. Are they going to push back? And there's two things that he shared with me that ended up being true. And you don't really know until you try it. But the first is that all of your employees do have an opinion, whether they're sharing it with you or not. <laughs> and if they enjoy working there, meaning if they're still on your payroll, they would love to have sway with the decisions, but they don't want to like be calling you every day with opinions on running the business. In other words, your, your employees, your team members ha have, they want to work in a good place and they would love to have a vote on, on you know, certain topics. Um, and I never really thought about it that way. Like I always thought I would be a burden to them by, Hey, let's talk about this HR policy. Um, but it well, turns can out I interject that for a second? Like, yeah, I want to interject on that. And I know we're talking about policies in general, but this is why we invited all of our team to demo the PSAs. We went into the sales calls mm. with the team and afterwards asked the team. Now, we saw a couple of them and one of them I just shut down because I was like, no, I don't want anyone else's opinion because I know for a fact this is not going to work for us. <laughs> but the other ones... The other ones, I was like asking everybody, like, what do you think about this? Do you guys like this? And that's exactly what you're talking about, um, but it, at another level, right? Because to a degree, right? Because like, the thing is, like, I never thought to ask our senior consultants, like, what do you think about our HR policy, right? Because I know their yeah. answer is going to be like, what's our HR policy, <laughs> which is yeah. also another problem in and of itself. But <laughs> it, you're, you're absolutely you want to create a business that is a democracy, not a kingdom, right? There, there's, and those are the what, and the reason you want to do that is those are the businesses we see succeed the most, right? Uh, look at the companies that have succeeded the model and been acquired. My favorite company to think about is Zappos, right? Okay. Yep. Um, Tony Shrey, uh, when he, when he ran it, when he was alive, did, it was very democracy. It was very talking to everybody. It was very, everybody is in the trenches. My favorite thing about that whole story is that like, no matter who was hired, even if it was the new CFO, had to work the phone lines for three to six months before they can start their actual job so they can understand because their core competency was customer service, right? Um, so cool. And so building that up, right? Being part of that. And like, that wasn't just his brainchild. That was him talking to the leaders of the team and getting everybody in on it because otherwise if everybody wasn't in on it there's no way in hell a, a new employee especially a c level is going to sit and take phone calls for six months listening to people complain that their big toe is too squishy in the pumas that they just bought right uh, <laughs> a lot of shoe talk on today's episode um yeah. weird mental uh, picture thank you title title of this episode those those shoes were made for walking um <laughs> But like, that's, that's what we're talking about here is that get that buy-in from the team and especially in a small business, because yeah, like I was talking earlier, you don't want your team to not like you and go on Glassdoor and complain about it. Oh, Lucas is such a meanie and he's always just dictating and doesn't care and blah, blah, blah. Right. So this kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier about caring about your employees. 
bring them in on the fold, that's a good thing, especially in a small business. You still have final say, obviously. You have you have, you have veto power, but yep. getting their input on a lot, not all, a lot of things can help you succeed as a business. I, I 100% agree yeah. with that. And going back to the EOS model, because I like the EOS model, by the way. Um, there's also, a, there's another book called Pinnacle, very similar ideas, uh, you know, if you want to take a look at either one. But the other thing that I like about the concept of, of rocks, right? Giving people responsibility. First of all, in order for them to have a rock, you have to do the sharing that you're talking about, right? You yep. have to bring them, you have to involve them in the process. But one of the ways that you grow employees is by giving them a rock, give them something to carry, give them some kind of responsibility that they know has material impact on the business, whether they're a manager or whether they're a tech, it doesn't matter. Give them something that they have ownership of, that they learn something new, it grows them and it makes them feel involved and it extends that democratic nature that we're trying to strive for. I think the ideal solution is somewhere in between a kingdom and a democracy, but you have to have the structure. And that's where something like EOS or Pinnacle comes in. It gives yeah, you it, that structure. It, exactly. Uh, like we know how to troubleshoot and, and how to you know sell our services and whatnot. And uh, it turns out the fundamentals of a business don't need that much innovation. <laughs> and there is like a set way, you know, and I, didn't, yeah. I guess I didn't, I didn't want to believe that for the first 13 years, we've been running on EOS for two years. And it wasn't, to be honest, it's probably my pride. It wasn't until I put my pride down and realized, okay, EOS is actually pretty cool, because I don't have to think about the how to run things anymore. I can just let my ideas flow based on what my clients need, right. And then uh, to, just to explain, I uh, use the term Eric, a rock, um, for those who aren't aware of kind of the, the weird language behind it, all a rock is, is a 90 day goal, like a quarterly goal. So we just had our quarterly last week uh, with the leadership team. And to give you an example, one person's rock was to look at every single one of our contracts in our PSA and remove discounts. So that's, that's another kind of touchy subject. Now we're not just like immediately removing them without talking to the client, but we have a lot of inconsistencies and two of our leaders are going to be collaborating to communicate with the clients and on what, you know, the new ch prices are going to be like, um, while the account, uh, the, our finance leader is going to be, you know, auditing every single one of our contracts. And that's an example of like a 90 day policy. It's not technical. It's not necessarily HR. That one happens to be financial, you know? Um, and it turns out they get jazzed about this because they're like, oh my gosh, that's, that's revenue that we haven't even tapped into. You know, like they get super energized by this. Whereas me, I'm, I know every single client, right? I'm, I'm, the one that sold most of them. So I'm like, Oh, do we want to take away that, that discount? And I I'm in the business so much where it's a muddy decision for me, but yeah. our team member who took that rock, she is going to crush it. And she's got a 90 day timer on it. It's phenomenal. Right. By, by bringing them in. Um, the second thing I wanted to go back to what, what this sort of, let's call them mentor, um, client, shared with me that I've always really had another kind of mental block on is profit sharing. I'm not saying that everyone needs to do this, but when he says you need more leaders on your team to help you do this and you need to do profit sharing. And I'm like, dude, I'm barely like turning a profit. I can pay for, you know, my family, very blessed with what we've got. We can, we're forecasting to hopefully hire someone in a few months. But it's not like I just have profit lying around to, yeah. to go give out. And what the profit sharing does is it allows you to to have leaders and being honest with them that we, we, we don't have like director salaries here. It's not like we can offer you a raise with this, but we are going to start profit sharing. And that's even going to be a slow burn. 
we we may not have much uh, at the end of this year or next year until we can really start to use the, the all of our leaders momentum to to grow um but what we did i'm happy to just to be an open book but there's no you know wrong way to do it is very simple it was done on just a handful of cells um in numbers which is the apple version of excel <laughs> and all it is is i decided we're going to take five percent of profit and distribute it evenly among our leaders we have five leaders um and i'm one of them so i'm actually doing divided by four that's simple so if there's only 50 bucks or let's do it simple 100 bucks left in the account at the end of the year we divide that by four um but if it's more awesome and so it's not a, a as monumental of this decision and uh, kind of a matrix i came from apple before this so i thought everything was like metered and some objective decision and they that person gets 3.26 percent that per, you know we just distribute it evenly among the leaders and that just having that that kind of a bonus at the end of the year even if it's small is is a good incentive for those leaders well what you're getting by doing that is you're getting buy-in right i think and that's a big part especially when you have people who are um are are you're asking a lot of them right and the way to get the most out of them is to get buy-in and that's what you're doing when you're doing profit sharing right you, or whether it's more money for the employee or profit sharing or commission or whatever it is you're getting that buy-in because now they actually have skin in the game to say the decisions i make will affect my pocket at the end of the year and that's right. huge it's a huge thing to do other than if i do my job or not i will get paid right because that's that's what an employee is so you're at that point to build that leadership team and we're not saying this is perfect for everybody and and obviously this is scratching a very 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 deep deep itch uh yeah you know you, you want you, you got to get that buy-in from people so okay so i know we're, we're, we're running short on time i want to um quickly you know uh is your thing that i should have done lucas is your thing that i should have done i should have done this earlier or i should made the same mistakes to get where I am. Right. And I, I'm like you, like, I don't have regrets because they, they do all teach us, uh, kind of bring us to where we are now. However, um, I would have had less, few, fewer bruises, um, and seen progress a lot quicker. Had I brought in a framework like EOS. Um, and again, I'm not like endorsed by them or anything, but whatever framework it is, just to let, instead of just reading like leadership books and like ink.com articles <laughs> and things like that, <laughs> like actually getting one of these frameworks and bringing, cutting some people into the fold, um, I would have done sooner. Uh, not only has it been better, but yeah, like you can always change too. Like that's what's cool about just business. It's just this fun puzzle and you can always change. Uh, because like you said, uh, you have veto power, Justin. It's like, yeah, at the end of the day, I do have veto power. Like they are the leaders. Um, but let's try this out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that, yeah, that is my, my thing that I would have done sooner because turns out it, it's actually taken a load off my shoulders and allowed us to do things like get, getting rid of these old, old discounts that are you know in our psa they're yeah. like man i can't believe i'm still charging them that much for it and they understand like hey that we gave you that price 12 years ago or whatever um so it, it's getting some outside help to do those business um level things right and that's exactly what we're trying to accomplish here with the podcast we are your outside help and we want to hear from you if you like the idea of EOS, entrepreneurial, uh, entrepreneurial Operating System, which is something we didn't say yet in this entire show, it's the Entrepreneurial Operating System. You can read books like Traction by Gina Wickman, I want to say his last name is. Um, yeah. 
uh, or learn more about EOS, you could always hit up Lucas. He seems to be a new EOS pro. He's been he drank their Kool Aid, obviously. Um, oh, yeah. And he's in on it, in on it hard, which is great. Don't get me wrong; it's a, it's actually a delicious Kool Aid. It's a group that you want to be a part of. Um, but that's what the podcast. That's Kool-Aid is. Yep. And that and that's what the podcast is. We we want to be that outside help for you, the MSPs. So if you do have questions, comments, concerns, worries about your MSP. Hit us up at the at facebook.com slash group slash all things MSP. Ask us to be a guest and we'll help you with your questions and we'll bring you on the show and maybe even have Lucas come back and help you with some management techniques. That could be a good that'd be a good four-way episode. It means Eric and I get to say even less well, Eric says less. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, and I'll have to stop talking at some point. Uh, Lucas, real quick, where can people find you online if they have questions about EOS or management or uh, if they want to join the Fuji team? Sure. Um, you know, uh, Fuji is F double O J double E dot com. Um, it's like the phonetic spelling, I guess. The domain wasn't chosen, so I misspelled Fuji on purpose there. Um, and then I write uh, these sort of things, like these lessons, on LucasAcosta dot com, um, and that's on like a little newsletter type thing. So when I have these little bruises, I uh, I share them there hopefully to save other people from getting them. Nice. Nice. Thank you. Eric, any final words before we sign off to our adoring, adoring fans? Well, first of all, Lucas, thanks. This, I think this was a great episode. I really appreciate you sharing and, and prompting us to talk about these things. Um, Justin, we're going to have a discussion about my New Balance sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> it's always somebody. It's always somebody. Uh, if you do like the podcast, please go to your favorite podcast app, leave us a review, uh, tell us how much you love Eric and all of his wisdom, and then tell us how much you hate me and all my talking points. Uh, we're okay with it. We just want the, we just want the boost. Don't forget to go to YouTube, uh, dot com. Look for Eric Anthony, find the all things MSP podcast, like, and subscribe, hit that little bell for notifications, join facebook.com slash groups slash all things MSP. Tell us what's going on there, how we can help you with your business. If you want to be a guest, that's where we're at. That's it for us at the All Things MSP Podcast. Till next time, bye! <laughs> we do it for the fun. Uh, apparently. We'd, we'd, do it, we'd do it for the hearts. <laughs> <laughs>